Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Duck Bowen, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. Super excited to have you on this uh, Facebook Live. Hashtag replay. If you catch this on the replay, you can fast forward it to about the three minute mark. That's usually when I'm done saying my hellos. Today, we're going to talk about um, the death rate of uh, coronavirus, of COVID being 20%. A range of 16 to 24, 25 percent, depending on which numbers you believe, uh, which you might disagree with, but uh, it's definitely not the 0.000003 percent or whatever it is people want to say. Um, all right, hey John Schuler, oops, sorry about that. Hi Angela, hi John Schuler, hi Vicky, Cassandra Green, what's up? Amy Winters, how are you doing? Sandra, my girl, you look great. Hope you're doing okay. Um, Alabama's in the house. Hey, Ronald, what's up, buddy? Marina, go good, good to see you. Thank you guys for all your support. Um, Mim from Australia is watching. Always great to have you, Mim. Abigail, uh, Lee, Rochelle, Sam, what's up, Sam? Jennifer, Anthony, hey, you guys, thanks for sharing. Thanks, for, Thank you for watching. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, put in the comment section where you're watching from so we can see that this is an international. London's in the house. Awesome. Australia, Bronwyn from Australia is watching. Thank you, guys, so much. Idaho's in the house. Florida, what's up, Florida? Denver, jo Joseph Kahn. Hi, London. Here you go. Hi, Helen. How are you? Thanks for sharing the video. Appreciate that. Hey, all right. Where's, let's see, some other people here. We're going to talk about the 20% uh, death rate. All right. What's up? How's it going? Fort Worth, Texas. Christopher. What's up, man? Spring, Texas. Hey, I'm down here in Houston. Hope you know that. Oregon City. Hi, Katie. What's up? All right, Ohio, I'm not cool. <laughs> Uh-oh, hey, from New York, stay safe, Kathy. Hope you're okay. Stay safe. Oh, Vancouver, Washington. Awesome. Oh, uh, uh, um, New Jersey's in the house. Be safe, New Jersey, Diane. Durango, I love Durango. I was just there. I love visiting up there, one of my favorite places. All right, where are you guys calling in from? Where am I? Uh, say, oh, Florida's in the house. Got to be careful, Florida. Emily in the UK. Awesome. Hey, Brian. Hey, I like that goatee. That's pretty good. Didn't bear me. Good morning from Brisbane. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sharing. Today we're going to talk about, uh oh, let me see. I, I got to find you. Yeah, I got to get you off. Let's see. Southwest Indiana is in the house. All right, Vonda, what's up? <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to talk about the COVID um, uh, not numbers again being 20% um, death rate. I want to clarify some things, uh, respond to some very smart people who had some nice comments to say, uh, and then clarify a few things and uh, see if we can kind of chill the fuck out real quick. <laughs> chill out, chill the fuck out. Um, the reason why I'm doing this, some of you guys might be wondering, like, why are you doing this, Dr. Wrong? It's because remember, I'm a bariatric surgeon. So most of my um, following is uh, obese po population or formerly obese. And um, I have people who are non-surgery patients who follow me for the weight loss tips. But the number one risk factor for uh, bad outcomes for being on a ventilator with COVID is obesity. And I know we talk about age, but it really is obesity. So. Um, that's why I did the COVID uh, coronavirus um, videos back in March when this first started. March 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared this a pandemic. And before that, I was just like you. I was not taking it very seriously. I don't watch the news. I wasn't really paying attention. But when that came across that it was um, a pandemic, I started looking into it, saw the numbers, saw the concerns. and. Um, and I thought people weren't taking it seriously enough because they were just uh, posting funny, silly memes and stuff like that. So I started trying to explain the coronavirus, how it kills you, that coronavirus, how, how does coronavirus kill you video, like um, got almost 16 million views. And so 
after I, I did a coronavirus video a day for about three, four weeks. And after the countries started shutting down, I felt like there was plenty of information. People were taking it seriously. I transitioned to an edutainment series where I brought on friends and celebrities who were trying to educate you, but also entertain you um, during your time at home on lockdown. And um, then, you know, I chilled out for a while, but um, now with the opening of the coronavirus, with the opening of the economy, it seems like people aren't taking it seriously again, I, and I get it. People are frustrated. People are upset. They are confused. And this video is really to just um, help people process the numbers, right? And I know the numbers are not perfect. I'll address all that stuff. Um, but, um, you know, this the, these are the true numbers as best as we know them right now. So um, do me a favor. Please hit share share the broadcast, tag somebody who needs to watch this video. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to promote anything. I'm here to just cut through the bullshit and get people to take the opening of the economy. And I agree, we can't keep the economy shut down forever. We have to open it, but let's do it in a smart, elegant, um, American way. Like, you know, what? it's 2020, it's fucking 2020. Let's 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 um, let's be smart about how we do it, right? So, um, why is the coronavirus death rate twenty percent? Why is it not what um, some people are saying? First of all, a lot of people don't have the proper calculations. So, um, you probably have seen this meme on Facebook, and you probably know this person who thinks that the coronavirus epidemic pandemic is overblown, that it's media hype, that it's not real, that we don't even know if there's a such thing as coronavirus. And they're gonna, you know, and they'll do something like this. And there's a Facebook meme of it where they'll take the death rate, the death, the number of deaths. So let's say, let's call it 100,000. Today is March 20th, is May, <laughs> I keep saying March. Today is May 27th and there's 100,000 United States deaths, okay? And they'll take 100,000 divided by the population of the United States, which is like 330 million. Uh, they'll get a number that is like 0.00003%. And the meme says like, okay, so there are 0 .00, your chances of dying from coronavirus in the United States is 0.00003%. And Remind me why we closed down the country. This is stupid. Open us up now. See, that's how idiots think. Now, I love you if you believe this. It's just not true. It's it's improper use of numbers. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is um, explain in um, a, a better way, the proper method for calculating this. And listen, I know it's not perfect. I know that you could make arguments but give me a second to just try to explain, because first of all, for the first thing is, if you don't do it right, if you believe some of these memes, you're going to hurt people. And I'm not saying, and screw you if you think I'm fear mongering, this channel's not for you, get off, you know, go away. So I'm not fear mongering, I'm just telling you the numbers, the math, this is just it, right? So you're actually doing more harm. If you say, well, the incidence, the death rate, the blah, 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 is 0.0003%. Open up my country now. Open up the beaches now. Open up the bars now. Are we going to go get my hair fixed? And you're going to end up hurting more people. Okay. So a better way, instead of just saying, here's the de number of deaths, divide that by the number of people in the country. A better way is what most of us do, which is to take the number of deaths and divide it by the number of positive cases in the country. So for example, the United States, we have 100,000 deaths and uh, 1.7 million. So I'm, I have my phone here, I'm gonna do that real quick for you. 100,000 deaths, divide that by 1.7 million. That's 5.8, 5 5.9%. So roughly 6% death rate. Now that works, but it's not perfect. And some statisticians, some people who had a 
class recently might want to argue with that and say something snarky. That's fine. I admit it's not perfect, but that's how most people are going to do it. And it's better than um, the other way, which is to take the deaths and divide it by the population. And that's totally dumb. Okay. And I'll get to the comparison about obesity death rate and smoking death rate and all this other bullshit stuff. Right. So this is how most people would do it right now. They'll go to a website like New York times, take the number of deaths divided by the number of positive cases. If that's what you got, but that's not actually not, there's a better way. There's an even better way to do it. And the even better way to do it is you have to know the outcomes, the outcomes. So by outcomes, that means you test positive. What happens? Well, there's only two results. You can either recover or you die, recover or die. All right. And yes, you can make arguments about how you follow it up, how you record it. That's fine. You don't believe the numbers, whatever. Um, but that doesn't make me incorrect. Maybe not as accurate as you'd like it. You know, because right now, as things are changing with coronavirus, the picture was very fuzzy back in uh, February and March. And as we've gotten more numbers, the picture has gotten clearer and clearer. You know, it's like when you're looking through binoculars and the picture's fuzzy and you you kind of, as you get better, you you um, get the, a sharper image. So that, that's what's happening as we have more numbers come in. Um, so the the notion that, that, you know, doctors increase the... Uh, diagnoses or market incorrectly or that there's not a complete follow-up there's not a hundred percent follow-up if someone recovers dude that just set that aside for a second right that doesn't change what what this method what the proper way to do it is so you need an outcomes so in America as of today there's 1.7 um, million cases hundred thousand deaths now of those 1.7 million cases roughly 500,000 have outcomes 500,000 have outcomes. We know what's happened, right? Um, now, why do I say roughly? Well, because like, it depends on what you read. There was a article, uh, a paper from Johns Hopkins that was released up to May 22nd. Um, the paper said they estimated over 300,000 um, recoveries, recoveries. And then you can go to another website um, some counter websites and things like that. And you can see numbers up to 600,000 recoveries, right? So I'll just pick 500,000 recoveries. That's fine. Um, so of the 1.7 million cases in the United States, we have 100,000 deaths. We have 500,000 re recoveries approximately. So that is 100,000 divided by total outcomes, which would be 600,000, right? 100,000 died, 500,000 recovered, 600,000 people. So 100,000 divided by 600,000, which is one sixth, which is 16.6%, right? Um, now that's a range because if you say there's 600 outcomes and that's one seventh, right? Which um, is 13, 14%. Or if you pick the low end, like the Hopkins number, of 300,000, now you have one fourth, 300,000 plus 100,000. So that's one fourth, so that's 25%. So really your range now, uh, as of today, is roughly 14% to 25% death rate, which is pretty much in the middle. If you take the middle, it's about 20% death rate. That's that's the proper way to do it. You know, uh, everything else, is speculation okay so let's pretend like we have cured coronaviruses and there's not going to be any more coronavirus right and that at one that we are at 1.7 million in the united states okay so eventually over time those people who don't have outcomes we will have outcomes most of them as you know will will recover some of them won't, you know, will die, but we'll eventually have an outcome. Well, so let's say all of the people we don't have an outcome on, they all survive. So the 1.1 million that currently don't have an outcome, they all survive. 
So now that'd be a hundred thousand divided by 1.7 million, which gives you the 5.88% death rate that you take from putting uh, the number of deaths over the number of positive cases. So when you do that calculation, that's really the best case scenario based on the current numbers. Now, what if those one instead, Lord forbid, the 1.1 million people, they all died. The ones we don't have outcomes for, they all died. Well, now you're talking about 1.2 million divided by 1.7 million or 12 over 17, which is roughly 75%, right? So the death rate of 75%. Now that's highly unlikely, but that's what we would call the worst case scenario. So let's say there are people, um, that's, that's the actual, that's how you would calculate the death rate. So based on the current numbers with the current number of outcomes, we know that your death rate is between 14 to 25%. I just picked 20%, right? Right in the middle. Okay, so just give me some leeway there. Now, let's address some of the questions or comments, right? The number one objection is the asymptomatic carrier. Dr. Vong, asymptomatic carriers. What about asymptomatic carriers? So asymptomatic carriers, you know their carrier. How do you know you're their carrier? They tested positive. So they are in that pool. They're already accounted for in the pool of the 1.1 million. Now, once they have an outcome, they recovered, which is most likely since they are asymptomatic or low symptomatic, right? They most likely recovered. Then they would move to the recovered side. That's it. Dr. Fong, what about all these people that don't, that are asymptomatic carriers and don't have tests or they didn't get tests or they stayed at home and they recovered on their own? So what? They don't figure into the calculation. They don't figure into the calculation. And you can suppose, see that, that's the thing. People sit there and say, I read in this article or, the, or even worse, they'll say it like demonstratively. Like I know, like you can, you can have up to 50% asymptomatic carriers. How do you know? How do you know? I saw a news article. It says up to 80%, 50% can be asymptomatic carriers. Well, you don't get to cherry pick. You don't get to say, I believe the CDC when they say, or the World Health Organization say that it's 50% asymptomatic carriers, but you don't believe them when they say the total number of cases is X, Y, Z, or the total number of deaths are 100,000. Dude, pick, are you, which one are you gonna believe? Are you gonna believe both? I mean, you have to believe them both, right? Or, or don't believe either. In which case the answer is you don't really know. We don't really know. So if you don't really know, you just say you don't know. You don't know how many asymptomatic carriers, but there could be a lot. Well, there could be none. The fact that you want there to be a lot, so the incidence is, the, so the death rate is lower, so that it proves you right that this was totally overblown and that we shouldn't, that we need to open up the economy doesn't make me wrong and doesn't make the next person who says, no, there's no asymptomatic carriers. Because back in March, we didn't know about asymptomatic carriers. They weren't even figured into the calculation. We didn't even, you know. So your, your belief that there are a bunch of people running around that are asymptomatic and just untested, you can have that belief. It doesn't make you right. And it doesn't make me wrong. Get over it, right? These are the numbers based on what we know. It's going to be, it's currently, today's May 27th, you know, a 20% um, percent death rate. That's just what it is. I'm sorry if you don't like that number. It's just math. It's just what it is, right? Dr. Vong, you know, it's just not, it's not accurate until we have an antibody test, which te shows you if you've had exposure to uh, coronavirus. Uh, well, you're right except the antibody tests aren't really that specific. They're not really that good yet. Um, you're still speculating and it still doesn't fucking make me wrong. 
it still doesn't make me wrong, right? And you're absolutely right. There, there could come a day when we have an amazing, perfect antibody test that can totally, like specifically um, pick up SARS-CoV-2 and we know you have SARS-CoV-2 and, and it's perfect. And then we test everybody and we see, you're right. Like the death rate was really, they get put into the numbers as outcomes, right? As uh, uh, outcomes that have recovered. And you're totally right. It could totally drop that death rate way down. How far down? I don't fucking know. You're assuming, you're assuming that that death rate number is going to stay 100,000. So therefore, if you have more positive stuff, it'll go lower. Dude, that death rate might go up. That death number might go up. You don't know. And you just don't, you're still speculating. You still don't know how many people are going to be, um, you know, show that they caught this thing back in February. And what is, that's so, that argument, it doesn't matter. The difference between me and you is that it doesn't matter to me. I'm unemotional about it. These are just the numbers. You're emotional. You want, and I get it. Scared, frustrated. You think this is overblown. You're worried about losing your job. You are confused by who says this or that. You think it's political. You side with the Democrats or Republicans. I don't fucking side with anybody. I don't really care who gets elected. I don't care who's in the office, the White House. It doesn't bother me. This, this is the numbers. Dr. Vaughn, how do you know? You can't trust this World Health Organization. You can't trust this. To, to, okay, fine, fine. It still doesn't make my method wrong. You give me the numbers that you believe. You find a different set of numbers that you trust. You tell me, and we'll use that. Well, then, you know, if you don't, then you either have to accept that we just don't really, like, there are no trustworthy numbers which means now you don't trust the numbers with the seasonal flu. You don't trust the numbers with car accidents. You don't trust the numbers with uh, heart attacks, right? So here's this fucker that says something like this. You know, this is way overblown. Don't they know more people died of heart disease and we don't shut down the economy for a heart disease and these numbers aren't even real, but, but wait, hold on, hold on, sir, hold on. You can't sit there and say you believe the heart disease numbers but you choose not to believe the COVID numbers? Like that doesn't work. Like where are you getting your heart disease numbers? Oh yeah, the World Health Organization. Oh yeah, the CDC. These are the same organizations. So you don't get to cherry pick which numbers you're gonna believe or not believe. These suicide numbers are way up. Uh, how do you know? Because I read it, the, there's, here's this one report, here's this, well, what are those numbers based off of? Oh, government agencies. Oh, the same people you're trying to dismiss the COVID numbers for. It doesn't make sense. You don't get to have your cake and eat it too. Does that make sense? Next thing. I have always said that the problem is the coronavirus is a plus one. By that, I mean, I acknowledge. I mean, I live in the world of obesity, right? I, obesity is still happening. Heart attacks are still happening. Strokes are still happening. And coronavirus is a plus one. It's a plus one. It's in addition to all this stuff. And that was my warning. I was like, dude, you need to take this seriously. Which takes me to the next point. These idiots who say the season of flu in 2018 killed 80,000 people and we didn't shut down the economy. You are so stupid. I mean, you are, I love you, but that is so dumb. First of all, that's the 2018 season. It's a whole year, 80,000 deaths. The economy didn't shut down. We closed down a fucking U.S. government, the whole U.S. country. March, April, May, three months. We have 100,000 deaths in three months with the economy, with everything shut down. What's wrong with you? You don't, un and you want to throw into our faces that the flu is even worse. More people die on the flu. Oh my God. If we didn't shut down the country, we wouldn't be looking at 100,000 deaths, moron. We'd be looking at 200,000, 300,000, 400,000. I don't know. 
because it's all speculative. I know that it's a hundred thousand a day, but Dr. Fong, doctors are you know, misdiagnosing. They're leaving COVID on everything. Okay, fucker. Let me ask you this question. How many death certificates have you ever written out? How many death certificates? Just go ahead. I'll wait for you. How many death certificates have you signed? Oh, none. So what the, where do you get off saying that these doctors are lying and miscoding and changing? Because you saw it on Fox News? Come on. And yet somehow you want these doctors to put their lives at risk, to take care of your mother when she's in COVID. And yet you're, you're part of, and, and you can't get your pain meds. So you're angry at your doctor and you want your doctor, you want to call the doctor at two in the morning because you're got a fucking hang now. And yet you're saying they're dishonorable. You're saying that, and yes, there are rotten apples. Of course there are rotten apples. Of course there are doctors who aren't ethical. Of course some doctors push the envelope. But dude, some people think I push the envelope because I'm on social media saying fuck. And I also think say, well, fucking change the channel if you don't like it. It's my channel, social media. This is what it's all about. How has not cussing helped you? How has... How has all of these TV anchors and people and talking heads by not cussing, not like totally censoring, you still have fucking chaos. You still have people not listening. You still have people not social distancing. You still have people who are, who are acting like idiots. You're, they're just going to act like idiots. It doesn't affect me, man. So I, it's fine if you don't cuss. I get it. I respect it. You don't like the F-bomb. Fine. I respect that, but I don't ask you to start cussing. Why are you asking me to stop cussing? Because you're offended? You're fucking offended by the F-bomb? Really? And we've got narcotic deaths, we've got drug addiction, we got world hunger, we got child sex slavery, but you're offended by a fucking four-letter word. Really? Come on. Just... Hit share and say, listen, this is an adult conversation. Put earmuffs on. Put the kids in a different room if that still bothers you. Right? So we are in new times. Very different. Very different times. Okay? I'm not saying that the numbers are perfect. And I know there could probably be some misrecordings, miscalculations, and you can argue both sides of it. The death rate should be higher. There are people dying from heart attacks at a home that should be included. Yes, I know. I probably had coronavirus and recovered. I don't know. I didn't get tested. So, so what? It doesn't make the method wrong. Just because you don't like the fucking numbers or you don't understand it, that doesn't make it wrong. Right? Now... As the numbers come in, as people recover, this 20% death rate could go down. Probably will. But look at France. France's death rate is currently 20%. And they are three weeks ahead of us. Italy, death rate went up to 16, 17, 18%. Now down to 14%. Right? Uh, UK, its death rate keeps climbing. Keeps going up. Right? There was a time. You guys have forgotten back in March when there was only 10 or 20,000 coronavirus cases and the death rate was like 0.6% in the United States or 1% in the United States and 1.3% in the United States. And everybody's saying, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why are we shutting down? This is overblown. The death rate's really low. Now look at us. We're at 6% death rate. Could go up. Might not. We might be like Germany. Right? Who knows? The thing is, this this is the number right now, as close as we can get, right? So, sorry you don't like it. The math still stands. So, hope that's been helpful. I'm going to take some questions now. So, let's get your questions ready. I'll pop you up on screen. But, hey, I appreciate you guys very much. Listen, you know, I am i don't care what you think about me. I would rather be talking about weight loss surgery. I would rather be doing cooking demonstrations. I would rather be showing my patients how to garden. I would rather be talking about meditation and how you can take a holistic approach to your health. 
But my following, my people, are the number one people at risk for bad outcomes with coronavirus. And I built this fucking platform for the last 10 years. So I have the stage, I have the microphone. You don't like it, go somewhere else. I'm here addressing my following. I'm trying to help them avoid this, stay safe, get better, right? Just because you can't hopped on the stream and you got, you know, you got self-esteem issues because mama didn't, lo you know, didn't love you enough. That's not my problem. It doesn't change it. You know, it just doesn't. This is the math. This is how it works. Unemotional about it. I do get emotional when you start attacking my following, when you start calling my, 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 uh, you know, clients and, and patients and people follow me like sheep and whatever, like, fuck you, get off this page. It's not for you, man. I get it. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't need you. We, we don't want you. We have a community and tribe of very dedicated following who are trying to grow themselves personally, professionally, financially, health wise. And we are very adamant that you're not welcomed here. You can go take your shit somewhere else. Okay. For those who, who do like this, I love you. Welcome to Dr. V land. You might <laughs> like, damn, look at him. Okay. Let's do some questions. Hey, thank you guys. As always, I will edit this video down, put it up to my YouTube channel and um, hopefully get you guys. Uh, all right, here we go. Here you go. Hey, Rebecca, I love you straight up for all you do for us. What specifically people with autoimmune disease, more susceptible to your Hashimoto disease here. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful if you have autoimmune disease. If you're taking a steroid uh, chronically that lowers your immune system, you got to be real careful. Obviously, you're, you're at higher risk. Rosalinda, I love you too, man. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sheep are just fine. Thank you. Hey, Mary Lou's. Hey, everybody, click follow Mary Lou's Acosta. She makes the most um, amazing dishes. She does little cooking demonstrations, has pictures, really healthy stuff. That'd be great for you. You want to get healthy? You want to try to avoid coronavirus? Like, um, you know, start eating healthy. Start with food. All right. Hi, Mama Bear. Do you expect a huge second wave? And what's your take on children's risk too? Mama Bear, Aaron, I appreciate that question. I do expect a huge second wave. And actually, I'm going to talk about that in the next few days. It's going to be much worse, uh, mostly uh, due to our own actions. But you'll see. We'll talk about that. Okay. Um, and children are not at risk. Don't believe this inflammatory um, uh, Kawasaki disease, et cetera. Um, Kawasaki disease is well known. It's well studied. We studied it in med school. We studied it in residency. You know, it's inflammation of the medium sized vessels. It's nothing new, right? And um, there just happened to have a few pediatric patients who are showing up in New York with this sort of stuff. And I know that it's, it's might be spreading to other places, but it, we're on alert. It's not widespread. Um, it's still much more prevalent for uh, the obese population, older population, smokers, lung issues, et, et cetera, right? Um, and, and go from there. Can, can't stop rate of growth. I don't know what your question is. Sorry, Hen. JJ, nobody knows what the actual death rate is because Democrats are inflating the numbers. Oh, God, go away. Uh, Megan, what do you think of the CDC guidelines for school? You know, honestly, um, that gets a little political. Uh, I haven't really read the CDC guidelines for schools in particular. And um, I will say that um, our kids aren't really the ones at risk for uh, catching the disease. Yes, a few young people have gotten it but um, they're more of a transmission vector. They bring it home to elderly grandparents. Uh, it's the elderly school teacher, the professors that are at most risk, the janitorial staff, et cetera, uh, that are compromised. So, um, you know, schools are under a challenge. They are definitely gonna have to have smaller class sizes. Um, honestly, like we have become so comfortable with remote learning now. I think there will be a new uh, episode, new, new thing about remote learning. 
Okay. What about vitamin D? Vitamin D is super important uh, for your overall health. It has a lot of benefits, um, but the precursor to vitamin D is even more important, sunshine. You got to really get a lot of sunshine, uh, which is good for us in the US and Canada because uh, we're going into summertime. So we have lots of uh, sunshine uh, ahead of us in Europe and such. Now, uh, a little bit more worried about our Southern Hemisphere people like Australia, New Zealand, who are South Africa as such, who are heading into winter. So um, we, they might see a really bad surge. We're not sure yet. Uh, New Zealand's done a good job of keeping the numbers down and uh, as well as Australia, but we have to wait and see. All right. Should my 770 year old realize fear going to doctor for wellness appointment? Man, you know, a lot of doctors have um, started going to uh, online visits, virtual visits. Um, I, my guess is your 77 year old doctor offers something like that. And so it really is going to depend on uh, what level of um, uh, care they need, what sort of, you know, like, you know, how much they need. Um, what's a good dose for zinc, Nancy Bishop? What's up, girl? Um, I wouldn't go crazy on the zinc. Zinc's, um, you know, a uh, mineral that uh, is a trace element that um, we need for several um, functions in our body. Uh, the whole big thing about zinc right now that um, is a surge, it, it goes around the hydroxychloroquine rage from uh, a, few, a couple months ago. And we know that, you know, the um, hydroxychloroquine doesn't work, um, which I, I, you can go back, look at my videos. I, I have a video that says, I don't understand what's the big thing about the hydroxychloroquine. And in my understanding, it shouldn't work, you know? Um, so, so uh Zinc is supposed to augment the function of um, hydroxychloroquine. Hey, Alex, what's up, buddy? Dr. V, is weight loss surgery not safe to do right now because of COVID? You know, this is a, probably a good question to maybe end the broadcast on. I don't know how long I want to go. Um, but um, I, this is really a question for uh, actively practicing surgeons and programs and and uh, communities, right? So obviously uh, in hard hit communities like New York City, they're not doing elective cases yet. In some cities, um, I know I have a, a couple of good friends, Dr. Helma Billy, who might watch this later, and Dr. Terry Simpson, who are in California. They're both great bariatric surgeons, good friends of mine. And their hospital has opened up to start doing bariatric surgery. Uh, my friend up, I'm in Houston, Texas right now. Uh, my friend um, in uh, Tyler, Texas has just started doing uh, bypasses again. Um, so a lot of it's gonna depend on how hard hit was your community? Um, how many cases did that hospital have? Are there still active cases in the hospital or not active cases in the hospital? Uh, but I will tell you that most um, programs for sure are, have increased their precautions and uh, pretty much every elective surgery now they are requiring patients to go test for uh, COVID uh, coronavirus so uh, even if you're having a gallbladder removed or hernia surgery or elective procedure even a colonoscopy uh, they're they're requiring patients to have coronavirus tests so be prepared for that um, Jacqueline Diaz, antibody testing, how accurate? Yeah, not so good just yet. And uh, we still have some issues that they're they're working through. Um, I wouldn't, um, right now it's too early to hang any sort of conclusions on antibody testing. So uh, great question. Uh, Sharon, does a, using a CPAP machine increase your risk? It doesn't increase your, your risk. It just means that you obviously have, you have sleep apnea, uh, which is a pulmonary function, right? So a lung function. If you catch it, you have increased chance of, um, of worse outcomes because maybe you don't have the 
lung reserve. So be careful, take a lot of precautions, all right? All right, thank you, here you go. So Susan, yes, I had to have the COVID-19 test before my pacemaker procedure. Good luck on your pacemaker procedure. I hope everything turned out turned out well. Lisa Irwin, what do you got to say, girl? Ah, cute picture. I went to the PCP here in Arizona. They took our temperature at the door and only that patient's in with no other people. I'm going to tell you about the whole temperatures thing. I, I'll do... Um, I'll do some other videos. So if you're liking these coronavirus videos, I'm going to do probably one every other day. But I'm going to tell you, I think the temperature taking thing is really kind of dumb, kind of dumb. Because if you've got fever, one, it could be fever from a lot of things. doesn't have to be from coronavirus. So it's nonspecific. And then two, if you do have a fever from coronavirus, then you're probably already infected a shit ton of people. And number three, uh, coronavirus doesn't really spike fever that much. And that's also another rumor lie. Uh, I don't know anything about Golden Seal. Uh, oops, here we go. How do you ex how do you see recovery from COVID-19 in the Houston metro area? We're doing better than uh, Chicago. <laughs> You know, Houston's the fourth largest city. Chicago's the third, and Chicago's on fire. Uh, Houston's doing pretty good. Uh, give it time, Goldie Con. Sex of Sunshine is helping. It's uh, the numbers are coming down. We'll be all right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So, Shelly Smith, the NAC supplement. There's really no good data on that. Oh, I knew it. See. Doc Simpson, so if you take temperature and ask a few questions, you have a better sense than the PCR test. Interesting, buddy. I think it goes back, and I think Doc would agree with me. It, it is, um, you know, the history and physical, right? History and physical. This is what I was trying to say. It's sensitive but not specific. That's exactly right. Taking the temperature. Um, <laughs> what does weed do to your lungs? If you don't know, you shouldn't be smoking. All right. Uh, waffles, I find your videos very informative. You should do more. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, check you next time, Doc. We'll watch in a bit. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for watching. All right. Yeah. Hey, Gordon Raphael. What's up? Look at you looking all like that. What about lupus and COVID? You know, um, I think it goes back to what medicines are you taking? How well control is your lupus? Are you taking prednisone? Are you on a big steroid dose, which we all know um, will lower your immunity? So, can you give a few examples of how a second wave will be worse? It's going to be worse. It's going to be a lot worse. And uh, it's going to have uh, more cases, more deaths. And I'll do that's my next video in a couple of uh, days. How will the number look like in August? Uh, the current mathematical models has us in the United States um, about 140,000 to 150,000 deaths currently. So, um, Tess, thank you for your update, Dr. Free. Thank you, Tess. All right. Uh, vitiligo and COVID risk? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I get, unless, again, you're on one of these medicines for your vitiligo that, that lowers your, um, your immune system. So you got to be careful about that, too. All right. Oh, here you go. No spleen. Yeah, here we go. Oops. Here we go. Yeah, as you know, your spleen functions in your, in your immune system. So uh, if you don't have a spleen, you're at risk for all sorts of infections, right? All right. Man, you know, homeschooling, you should look into it. There's really no, no reason really to go to school anymore. It was an archaic system created out of the Industrial Revolution to create uh, educated workers. Um, I've talked about that. Hey, Francis, long time. Great to see you. Uh, I'm with your pastor and enjoyed our time at Loveless. You don't even look at this. That can't be your, is that you? You know, it's just somebody, you always remember your great advice, naturally feel hungry, so I naturally feel like the Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Hey, look at that. Are you married? So cute, knowledgeable as fuck. I like you because you said ASF. No, but I have a long time girlfriend. What about kidney disease and dialysis patients? Danielle, man, that's a good question. You know, with kidney disease, there's often other comorbidities. It's most patients with just kidney disease don't have just kidney disease. A lot of times they'll have high blood pressure because your kidneys function um, 
a lot with your um, kidney disease, your your blood pressure, and you, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Your kidneys f control and re help regulate your blood pressure. That's what I'm trying to say. So a lot of patients with kidney disease will have hypertension. Uh, a lot of them will have diabetes and that might've caused the uh, kidney failure. A lot of them will have autoimmune diseases like lupus, for example, and inflammatory diseases. Um, so usually, uh, especially if they're in stage, by that I mean they're on dialysis now, then um, they're already immunocompromised and they have comorbidities, which absolutely puts them at higher risk for sure. Um, what do you think of the racial and blood type differences in outcomes? You know, I think it's too early to really, really say things are, are changing. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there's any benefit from uh, um, blood types for sure. Avery, what about amusement parks? Is it reckless to be open? Again, it's the same thing. We're going to have to be social distancing. The heat will help, you know, the metal. I mean, if you ever... Man, last uh, two summers ago, I went to Orlando June to Disney World, and dang, it was hot. It was hot. But, dude, it was crowded. You got these long lines. Um, you got to be really, really careful. So, all right. Anyone want to give me a compliment real quick? And I'll <laughs> There we go. Hey, Nora, thank you for what you do. You're as cool as fuck. And with that. That's the best way to end a Dr. V broadcast, an F-bomb. All right. Love you guys very much. Stay safe out there. Um, best wishes to our first line, front line uh, doctors, nurses, you know, our um, techs and assistants and vena puncture people, even our front desk people who are signing people in, you know, they're scared too. So, and I get it. We're all scared at this time. Um and uh, the most we can do, the best we can do is take precautions, try to limit your exposure, not for yourself, but for the other person, right? Wear the mask, I know it looks silly, it's inconvenient. It's not gonna help you from catching it, uh, but it might do a little to help spread it and um, at least keep you safe, you know, keep the other person safe. So you do it for me, I'll do it for you. Wash your hands, uh, have a lot of cloths wiped down. and. Take care of our elderly. Take care of those at most risk. And for those of you who are wondering why a bariatric surgeon is doing coronavirus video, I'll say it one more fucking time. It's my peeps. They're my peeps. They're the people at the most risk, the morbidly obese. And the best thing that they did for themselves was to lose the weight. The best thing they did for themselves to decrease their risk uh, from coronavirus was to lose the weight. So if you think a bariatric surgeon shouldn't be talking about coronavirus, fuck off. Bye, guys. <laughs>